Where's the music? Hey friends, it's Dee. I am back with another I Am Devoted episode. And this time it's going to be hopefully kind of quick. I just wanted to share what I feel like the Lord has been telling me from um, today. It's John chapter 17 verse... No, that's not true. Sorry. <laughs> it was from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And the verse was verse 2. Um, but we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word. But by the open statement of truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. So that is the verse from the devotional. My almost first high is what to renounce. And um, I put down the Bible. Um, so I just wanted to share because I have just been having such a struggling week. And today is um, Saturday. So yeah, this past week has been a struggle. And I've just been noticing that um, with the area that I'm struggling in, when I struggle, I am so unproductive. And there's a verse in the Bible that says that we can do nothing apart from Christ. And I have to say that when I am um, woefully dis disobedient, I can completely see how I am like no longer productive and... Um, I just feel like I'm just kind of spinning and in, and on emotional highs and lows. And so now that is where this verse comes in and why it's really interesting because it is even about our thought life and the things that people cannot see. What is um, a strong struggle for me may not even be a struggle for somebody else. Like cursing, let's say that I'm like somebody who just curses constantly and the Lord has given me conviction about it to the point where I know that I need to make a conscious effort to not curse it doesn't mean that it's somebody else's sin like there might be a pastor who preaches in a really urban area where the people are cursing all the time and you and like other believers may be like dude that is so uncalled for but for that congregation and for that time period or for that season that might just be the way that the Lord is allowing him to minister not my place to judge but also not my struggle not his struggle right so for me that's what this has really been about and so when the bible talks about um to not be cunning and deceitful and to um and to not practice you know that kind of action um for me, it's even as far as like what I'm thinking of or like what I look at on social media. Um, and so that has been my struggle this week and that has been um, an ongoing thing. And I feel like this today was like the Lord's, again, he's been really like trying to stamp things home for me. Thank you. But I um, have been so dis like, it's just struggling. So... I feel like today he was like, once again, okay, knock it off. Like, don't do these things. Even if nobody sees it but you and me. Like, I know what you're doing and you know what you're doing and you can't do this. So knock it off. So that's kind of like, it's my, my struggle. And then, um, at church, we just came from church. And so I just came from church. And tonight the pastor was talking about Ohana and in Hawaii, Ohana means family. And so he was talking about how the church is a family and there's all these different dynamics and how we really need to like come together and pull ourselves in. And I have just been really struggling with that as well because people that I have considered to be Ohana or have love like Ohana, when certain things come up, I just, I see that we're not necessarily on the same page. And while I am really okay with that, like I don't believe that we all have to think the same and be the same and blah, blah, blah. I do feel like, I don't know how to say it other than like, you can feel loved and then you can feel not loved. Or you can feel like there's a point where there's the love will end. And I guess that is where I'm, where I'm at with that. So the pastor talking about Ohana and this, that, and the other tonight, it was really making me wonder. And so I was kind of just looking around. And I was thinking, I really love this church. I love the teaching, solid biblical teaching. The pastor, he gives such great examples from his own life of how to just live in victory. 
even when you're struggling. And I appreciate that. And that's why one of the reasons why I adore our church. But I do, um, I also feel, you know, some of that disconnect. And unfortunately, being like one of the few black people in our church, I don't necessarily feel like the overwhelming desire to overcome that. I just feel like I need to sit back and pay more attention because some of the people that I let into my super, my inner circle, have disappointed me to the point where I don't want to be hurt. You know what I mean? So just working that out with the Lord. But um, so that's where I'm at this week. Like it's always a high because I believe that the Lord is just building my character even when I'm feeling low. So um, and that... It's just divine joy and divine encouragement. Like, I am his kid and these little challenges that I'm facing with people in my life are to build my character and to build my love and to also keep it focused on him and not allow myself to become too dependent on other people for feelings that of completeness. You know, remember Tom Cruise, you complete me, you hate him. Um, sorry. No, like, the Lord, I am complete in the Lord, right? So I need to remember that. And I am quick to get caught up in other people, you know? Like, I love to love. I want to give love. I want to receive love. So I'm quick and easy to give it. But I'm also quick and easy to get hurt. So I just didn't, you know, I, the Lord allows me to, to, in this time, remember where I need to keep my focus. So I appreciate that. And so while this is a kind of a lonely and a, in a challenging time, I know that it's for it's by his grace and he's doing amazing things with me and my personality and my character so that I can truly love and give over from the overflowing abundance that I know that I have. So that's where we're at this week. Thanks for letting me share. I don't want to make this long. So I hope everybody has a great rest of the weekend and I will see you on the next go. Ha. Does that even make sense? Can you be subconscious and intentional? Yes, right? Because if you read something, they tell you to do positive affirmations and then it goes in the back of your head and then like you're, you intentionally are moving towards it, even though you don't realize it, but because you're doing these affirmations constantly, like it just brings you toward what you want. So yes, I believe that you can subconsciously be on purpose.